Good evening, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Last Wednesday of March. Hope everyone's doing good. We're going to play tonight a little bit. I have kind of a plan. We'll see how it works out. I'll give a few, a few minutes for things to kind of catch up and all that stuff. Sometimes I get the notifications if I get if I'm live or not, and sometimes I don't. So there we go. I got a Facebook notification, so that must mean we are live. Hope everyone's had a good March so far. I lucked out and didn't get any of the snow. Well, I mean, it snowed, but it melted right away here. Hey, Tia. Um, but uh, my family up north that was they were down here visiting. Hi, Glenda. Good evening. Hello, Penny. They had some snow back home. So, hey, Danielle, your notifications. Woohoo, that's awesome. Hi, Karen. Okay, gonna put this up. Good evening. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I kind of have an idea, but, and I have some things done, but we're gonna play a little bit first. I miss you too. Hi, Sarah. Um, and then um, just so you kind of see what I did. So I've got two products here to play with tonight. And I'm hoping, I'm only going to probably do one. I have the white gesso um, that, oops, let me switch camera angles. Sorry about that. And I don't know if what I want to do is going to work best with this or not. I, I'm just going to try it. I've never done this before. Hi, Melissa. So um, you can get this. They have white, we have white and black gesso. And then I also have one that I did with the um, Ranger texture paste, the crackle paste. And we're going to see the results. We're going to do the same technique with both and just see the results. But what I want to do is I use Not Your Mamas for my my preps. And so I'm going to show you how I did the gesso with this is aqua pigment paper. Because later I want to try the same technique on this and see the different results. So I've got the, I have not played with this Fluttering Flight Slimline stencil. And it is just beautiful. And uh, some of the projects I've seen have just blown me away and just made me want to play with it like all the time. So I already have some, I really pixie sprayed it really well. And then I'm going to lay it on a straight kind of, it, it doesn't really too much matter. But I want as much of this butterfly up here as we can. This is going to be kind of a messy, not perfect, no real control thing. Like, it's not going to be super clean, I guess, is the best way to say that. So one thing you can do is use a brayer, use a towel. But I did liberally spray it this time with Pixie Spray so that I could get try to get a really good seal. Because if you haven't used gesso before, it's a little bit more liquidy than a paste. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and open this up and show you what it looks like. I do have the the foam piece and if it sticks on the inside that's fine but if you can tell it's 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 i mean it doesn't drip but it's like it's still kind of thick a little bit like pancake batter maybe would be a good way but it's if you can tell it's a little thicker than some of the other pastes and stuff so this is what we're going to play with and i i just kind of popped it down on everything and then i'm going to spread it out now this is going to to clean this up it's going to be a little messy I might do one of the texture pastes as well, but I was thinking of doing one of these with candy coat and the um, lace stencil and just kind of, because I want to play and see how it works. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and grab, I have one of the Simon Hurley, um, this is one of the Simon Hurley spreader tools. I'm not sure if they're, they, I think they're in stock, but I did get it in the store. Um, and I'm just going to spread it out and I try to always, when I do pastes, go one direction. I am trying to get all of the butterflies, and I want the butterflies to be as smooth as I can get them. But I don't care about this section over here so much. Um, I don't plan on cutting it down, but I do want to, I have to put it a little bit this way, but I do want to kind of, once I get this done, kind of mess this up a little bit. I don't care how perfect this section is. Because I want that little bit of texture, so I'm just kind of scraping it. I'm going to scrape the extra off. So it is a lot thinner type of 
thing. I, I mean, I'm not an expert. I know a lot of times you use gesso to prep th surfaces, especially people with mixed media, things like that. But I thought this is what I want to do. So normally I would use it like a baby wipe or something, warm this all up. But I have an ice cream bucket for the hot water. And I'm just going to toss those in there and let them dry or and let them soak. And I'm going to do the same thing with my stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it off. And I did one of these earlier, so I do have a dry one. And I always stick it stencil side, or not stencil, but like paste side down in my soapy water. And sometimes I leave it sit there. And if it sits there all night in the morning, a lot of times, or it sits there for a couple of days, it's just a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water, and it will be fine. And then I don't have to even scrub it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. Bring it up a little closer so you can kind of see it. So that's why I used a lot of pixie spray. I really wanted to make sure I could get that. I mean, I have a little bit of thickness right there where it is, but that's okay. Those clumps will be fine. And I'm just going to put this off to the side to dry. And then we're going to clean this up. I should have probably kept my scraper, but that's fine. Um, I have more than one scraper. It does dry fairly quickly on your glass mat, so you do want to kind of move it and get going with it. Go ahead and just wipe it off and grab some. Grab some baby wipes because they're the fastest and I can throw them away. So what I like to do when I'm using texture pastes and glitter glazes and all that is I wipe it really good with a baby wipe or two, depending on how much is left. I try to use just one. This stuff's a little bit different. And then I go in and I will wipe it with some squeaky clean. So now that's pretty clean. I'm just gonna save this for the next, the next cleaning. Stick that on my thing. Then I'm gonna dry it a little bit with my cloth. And then I'm gonna spray it with some squeaky clean, just to make sure there's no film left because the baby wipes don't always get it all off, but squeaky clean, we'll get it nice and kind of clean. And then just for fun, because I'm gonna play with this later, I also have our, hi Kelly, you're fine. We're just kind of getting started. I'm gonna use, this as the stencil of the month and I've just got some Not Your Mamas here. I'm gonna cut it down though to about six, six by six, just because Hello, you're cleaning. I was cleaning because I want to save this and I don't want to get a bunch of paste on it. So instead of using the te the texture paste from Ranger tonight, I want to do some candy coat and then I'm going to try this tech this technique off camera that I want to try tonight. So once again, I just have a bunch of pixie spray on there. Hopefully it's good. Oh no, I, yeah, I was cleaning a little bit. Um, I was throwing, we used that white gesso and it was kind of messy. This is just the pearl candy coat. Um, I'm not gonna worry about this being super perfect because I want some of that texture and non-perfectness. And then I can choose later what sections I like. So I just wanted to show, go ahead and we're gonna try this with different like I would say color, white pastes, a white glitter glaze would probably work, especially if you don't get it like super perfect on there, leave some cracks. Um, I don't even know if there's a name for it. I'm kind of making it up on the fly. We're basically gonna make a mess and have fun with it. Stairs were not your friend. They were not my friend a few weeks ago, Heather, and I am still sore. <laughs> All right, so I am also going to go ahead and pull this one off quick. You can see I still have gesso on me. It wipes off pretty easy, but I'm not going to worry. It's kind of dried on, and I'll scrape it off pretty good after we're done. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off and just kind of hope it looks... It's not perfect, but I'm going to just... Yes, that's what I said. It's it's this is the, What I want this is the texture for the interesting parts of it. So, and then I'll throw this in my bucket. Now, this is the part where I'm not sure how it's going to work. We're just going to play. 
got that to dry. So this is the one I did earlier. And it's going to be kind of hard to see. You can see the design. But this is the gesso. Hi, Kate. And it's this is the Not Your Mamas. And then I also, here's the one with the truck, the, and I'll show you the crackle. And just see how I didn't have the perfection over here. That's what I was hoping for, just a little bit. And then it kind of crackles on its own. So this is where we're going to kind of play. We're going to do them both differently at different times. Let me grab my little box here. Now, if I don't see your comment, you'll have to forgive me. Maybe I can turn it this way. That'll be easier. I have a whole bunch of chroma mists to the side here. I definitely want to use the, the new ones, but I don't know if I really want to spray so much. Um, we're going to do some spritzes, but I'm going to kind of, I'm kind of holding it up, trying to show you like kind of, I don't know, a foot away. And I'm just going to, I'm trying not to spray the camera. I'm going to try to spray towards the back of the box. And I'm just going to make a little bit of mess. But I want it to be, I don't know if it's going to work the way I hoped it would. But I haven't used all of these. So I want to make sure it kind of messes up. And of course, we're going to add that liquid gold. Because to me, that, that one just spritzes and kind of makes a mess. And then I've got... So that first one was Peacock. The second one, I don't know the names of these yet, is Lime. Um, I have a little bit, I don't know if I want to use this or not. This is Copper Shimmer is one of my favorites. So we're just going to spritz it out a little bit. I do like those big droplets. I tried to just grab a bunch of just fun kind of colors and just see how it was. That was the Magenta Sparkle. Throw a little bit of some of these aren't as thicker, they're like lighter colors, so they might not show up as much. Let's see, this one is the apricot, that's the other new one. Let's put the and then we're just going to kind of let it sit for a little bit and see what happens. Okay, I like I said, I didn't know how well what would happen with gesso underneath it, but I thought it would be fun just to see. And we'll maybe hit it with a heat tool in a little bit and see what it looks like. I'm going to put that to the side here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the crackle texture. So we're going to start with that peacock. This isn't fair. Actually, we're going to start with the apricot. It is. Um, I have not seen the new leaner. I don't know if I've seen them yet. Um, I haven't paid that close attention to the new, new to anything that hasn't been new for unless it's been Brutus Monroe. This is just some water. I think I'm gonna wet this a little bit, but I'll have to. I only have a couple lunar pastes right now, and I always forget to use them. Um, I got a couple in a couple of events boxes, and um, they're sitting on my counter actually behind me, so I don't forget. I'm gonna use some of the same colors. I the teal blue would be a really pretty color in the lunar paste. Does it have the is it one of the names? Is it like the tropical tango or the remember me or is it a new color? I know he was thinking about new colors. That was the coral. That one was quite bright. But do you see this is kind of what I was what well, this is the difference. The the crackle paste, it's getting inside those crackles and still showing. And that's kind of what I was hoping for. Now, the blue and the green are cool colors, right? So they're, it's a little bit brighter. Okay, new colors. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out. I'll look later and see if I can find them. I know he was at Creativation, and they were showing some of that stuff there. So, all right. Now, I also want to do a little bit of splash. So, well, thanks, Penny. I will check it out. I know that some um, Chris Dayton was live at at Creativation, and she was showing some things he was doing. But I wasn't. I was busy doing something, and I couldn't watch it at the time. Or she was showing some picture. Or somebody was showing it. That was the Gilded Aqua Splash, Voltage Yellow Jacket Tangent Hot Mess. I like hot mess. That's a mood ring. Ooh, might have to try that one. No chill and dart frog. Okay. Have to try that out and see. This is the Aqua Splash in white. It might not show up 
right away. I might need to dry this a little bit. Let's dry that quick. So it doesn't bleed into the other colors. I think you could do that. You could do this with aqua pigments as well and splatter them or dip them in and wet it down. That would be fun. So I'm going to keep moving it because of the paste. What I am going to try to heat it up just a little bit. To dry it off a little bit. This was actually the very first time I used the um, crackle. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I think they're awesome too. I love the colors. Um, and they're, I like the apricot was very, very light. Okay. So I thought that would be a fun, you know, I wanted to use the new ones and I used, you know, cause the, the peacock is beautiful, but it is very dark, so it can overpower everything. I wanted to throw a little bit of the purple aqua splash in here, just because I wanted that little bit of darkness. See, when drying that off a little bit, just adds that little bit extra texture. You know what? There you go, Danielle. I have them sitting on my desk and some, I forget about them all the time. And I grab my like gilded aqua pigments to, to do this. And I'm like, duh, I have gold, the gold aqua splash, the silver aqua splash, use that. So I've been trying to use them more and remember them. That's one of the reasons why I put them, they're like, I don't know if you could, my, where, I think my, but they're right there, just out of eyesight from me so I can see them. I know if the yellow is going to show up too much, but we'll throw a little bit. Yeah, it does. There you go. Put it on your desk, Danielle, and go for it. The purple is really pretty. We're just kind of adding all of them. I've got the pink passion. I mean, because this is kind of a rainbowy colored one. And then we're just going to let it sit. And then we're going to do some stamping and inking. I do think I'm going to add just a little bit of the raven. I've been waiting for the Raven. Um, and when they came out with it, I was super excited about it. And I hadn't even used it yet. I think that we did just a little bit of that. We might need to let it dry too before we do more. All right. Yeah, there. And I have a little um, like organizer for like papers that I don't know I inherited somewhere, and and I can keep a has just the right compartments to keep a uh, slimline card bases and card base pre-cut bases. And uh, then I ha it has like a little spot that you'd put your, I think that's where probably where you would put your post-it notes. And that's where I put my aqua splashes. But now I have one too many because I have a double of one and uh, it doesn't fit there. So hi, Ellen. Thank you, Heather. Um, we're gonna throw this out here and we're gonna dry this a little bit too. Just a little bit. So now this one was more of the blue. But it's now starting to dry in and in person, and I'll show it to you quicker, quickly. You can see more of the gesso. We just gotta help it along a little bit, because otherwise we won't be able to finish these cards. I'm just going to move it around real fast Oops. because I don't want it to bubble up anything. How are you, Ellen? It's still, I'm trying to bring it up so you can kind of see. You, just, you can see it. See the colors and then the lines? That's what I was... That would be fun to... And I think... The other thing I thought about doing, thank you, Karen. The other thing I thought about doing was like what Christopher did with the aqua pigments a couple weeks ago is just kind of patting off a little bit of the color. So it's not super damp so that it kicks away some of the bubbles and the and I think that, but I think it's really fun how the gesso takes the color. 
So here I'm going to kind of bring it up. It's not 100% dry. But I'm going to kind of, so you can kind of see that butterflyness. And I think that that's just turning out really fun. And then we're going to kind of cut it down somewhat because this is obviously a really big piece of paper. I just cut off some. And I know it's still damp because I can feel it. So I will tell you that's the trick I had heard is if you feel cool underneath something that's had sprays and paints on it, then it means it's still a little wet. But we got to let that dry a little bit. Oh, don't touch my stencils back here. All right. Let's check this one out a little bit more. Kind of dap this off just a little bit. Well, I like how that is. And then this is drawing a little faster. I'm going to bring that up so you can kind of see. See, like, I love how it, what I really wanted it to do is to go down inside the little crackly spots. And make the different colors. And then there's still some white from that texture paste. Thank you, I do too. I love this stencil, Sarah. I actually have, this is the first time I've got to play with it. And I was super excited to be able to get that done. Now, this is a heavily blue area, but when we cut this down, we might cut some of that off. So I'm not going to worry about that. So, okay. So we're going to let these dry just a little. Well, let's hit this one with the heat tool one more time. I'm actually going to flip it over. Yeah, they are, they, they're, these are some of my favorites. And I haven't played with the butterfly one yet. I'm, that one's on my list for this weekend. So I really, I love how this is the green and how it kind of faded back. And it's a little greeny, a little yellowy. All right, we're going to let those dry. We got to get some stamping done now. Now, I hadn't really decided from there what else we should do. So I thought I would pull out what was going. I have, the, basically, I have this, the release in here. And I grabbed some paper that would match. And I wasn't sure we played with this one. I'm thinking we need to use some of the pancetto. But I'm not sure what yet. So let's grab a piece of that out. But I have possibly an idea. So I think what we're going to do is use this or we're going to use the sweet wings. Because I really like those two items. And then we might, we're going to use a lot of stuff because then I think we're also going to use these sentiments. Okay. I'm going to set that down on the floor. So I think what I want to do is we're going to do a big, bold piece of this. And what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a piece of vellum. The heat resistant vellum because this is going to be an A2 card. Hello, not afraid of color, which I think is T. You played with that yesterday in a different way, and I love that stuff. The what what stuff? The this, Sarah? The pancetto or or um which stuff were you playing with? Because I've had a couple things out. Yep, T. I thought so. Just making sure that I remembered. Let's stamp my stencil back on here. I am going to go ahead and use, I think we're going to use this middle one. Hi, Christy. Yeah, the pancetto. Okay. Hi, Christy. How are you? We're going to use this middle one. I haven't played with the stamp set yet much either. A little bit. I've used more of the stencil of the month and the, um, that's what I want. Hold on. I'm just making sure it matches. It fits. We're just going to stamp it out. We're going to do some fussy cutting. Not my favorite thing, but we'll do it. We'll do it just for Heather. All right, let's get our magnet down here. Yep, a pancetto. All right, so I'm just going to try to make sure it's kind of even design-wise, you know, from where the dots are. Um, I'm not going to worry about it being straight because we're going to... But I think I want this to be kind of bold so i'm going to stamp it in but 
black. We're gonna do that. We're gonna we are gonna do Raven. I just I feel like I want that punch. And we're gonna heat emboss. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. I thought about adding some of the chunky glitter glaze, and we might do that, but that will have to be at the end so it dries. And then you guys will see that. You'll see the effect, but then when it's dry, dry, you'll see the final. Okay. Just going to stamp this down a few times. And I'm going to go wild and crazy, which is something I don't normally do. Especially on a live. And we're going to get out the Raven Detail Embossing Powder. Just because I tend to not... It doesn't like me. <laughs> it likes lots of people. It doesn't like me. All right. Perfect. It is a beautiful stamp. This was one of the, I'm a rebel. Yes. Um, it is a pretty stamp. It's not one of my, it's one of the ones I was super excited to, to get once the release was ready. This is the heat and the, the heat resistant vellum. which is just really fun. Oops. Close enough. I'm just gonna tilt it. Sometimes my lights don't always tell me if it's all the way dry. But I think what my thoughts are is we're gonna put it as a band across, I don't know where, probably up towards the, maybe up towards like in the middle, I don't know where, something like that. And then, we're actually going to do it on the other side too. So we have two. And that one, maybe we'll do in a fun color. You pay, oh, what did you think, um, T? I love them. They're one of my favorite things to, especially to, um, I'm getting, I'm getting a little more comfortable with watercoloring. So that's one thing. Um, I'm not an expert by no means, but I'm definitely like aqua pigments for watercoloring. I'm kind of, mixing them together and letting them do their own thing. We're going to use a different one for the other one, and we're going to use a different color. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. You, get, you can't have enough. I will tell you that if you don't have the pearl, get the pearl. Um, because you can add so much shimmer to all, you know, if you really want one that's shimmery and you don't have the shimmery one, you can add a little bit of the pearl to any of it and it will shimmer. Or you can water you can um, water the shimmer down and make it your own shimmer paint. Um, you know, and just put a little water in it. So the water reactive pencils and then blend with aqua pigments. I don't know if I know what the water reactive pencils are. Pearl what? I, oh, the pearl. I will show you, Melissa. It's always on my desk. Nope, that's water. That's an empty one. The pearl aqua pigment. This one. I have three bottles, I think. But so you can kind of see it. Okay, I know what you're talking about, Heather, the ink tents. But I will use it to paint. I will water it down and paint it on top of items. I will um, add it to other, like I would add, you can add it to like this coral, for example. Yep. And okay. I I will have to look and see what those are. I don't think I know what those are. But if you I'll show you in a few minutes, okay? We'll show I'll show you. Let me um let me grab another color. I want to grab um I didn't grab them out cuz I didn't think about it right away. I'm going to grab the What was that other one? We're going to grab the orange. The orange peel, if I can find it. No, nope. if I can find it. Maybe we'll use the Haluski. Sorry, guys. I'm going to grab my aqua pigments here. Or my... Well, here it is. We're going to use the orange peel for this one. I wasn't thinking about heating bossing when we first started. So. 
Good, Melissa. I have a few of Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. Um, I haven't used them a whole lot yet. I have one set. Um, I've used them very, very sparingly right now, mostly because I tend to use the aqua pigments or the chroma mists when I paint. I just put a little bit on my on my uh, glass mat here. There we go. And then we're going to use the orange. All right, we can get this out of the way. We don't need this anymore. I do love the Holuski too. I love the green. Um, it's just such a pretty color. But I think I want to do orange because I want the different pop of the color to uh, against the background. And then we'll decide which one can go on which one. Okay, now before I spill, we're going to put this away. This orange is just beautiful. I'm excited to make fall cards for this orange. Pumpkins. It's in leaves. Oh, I want to I want to mix the orange and the bronze and gilded and make a beautiful leaf out of that. Maybe I'll make a butterfly like that this weekend. See how it looks. Test it out. Okay. Now let's heat set this one. Oh, you are, well, I'm glad I had help. Sorry, <laughs> well, I'm not sorry. It's so pretty. And on here, it looks almost metallic-y. Look at it, it looks metallic-y. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it is. It's it's a pretty, it's a pretty orange. Um, it's it's prettier than you would think. All right, I'm gonna trim this with my trimmer first, just because I can save that kind of piece of vellum for something else. You know, there's just enough for like a sentiment or something. Then we're gonna go ahead and kind of fussy. Yeah, it is. It does look like copper, doesn't it? Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about the pattern being perfect as I fussy cut this because it's gonna, you know, it's it's gonna be on top of all that texture. It's just for fun. I could have just made a band and maybe we'll do a band with the orange. Let's see what we think the differences are. Um, and oh, there's a dog in the neighborhood barking. So my dog's trying to figure out who's barking. Sounds like the neighbor's leaving, so. He's barking. His dog is barking. So I can't believe that Easter is on Sunday and then April 1st is on Monday. And April 1st, not only significance, um, April and April Fool's Day, but um, it's significance birthday month. Lots of birthdays at Brutus Monroe in April. Mine. Miss Penny's, Walter's, Christopher's. I know there's another one. There's another one. I um, can't remember whose it was that said that. Um, I know I have it written down, but at the top of my head, I can't remember. Yes, your YouTube anniversary. That's a good date to have an anniversary. It's my honey and my anniversary too of um, the day we met. Daryl, yes. I knew Daryl's, but I, there's another person, I think, on the design team. Heather, your mom, my sister. Um, two of my best sorority girls. There's lots of birthdays in April. All right. Sorry, I'm kind of paying attention to this here a little bit. Francie's, that's right. And then, okay, and then your daughter, Melissa. Okay. It was somebody else. I knew we talked about this not too long ago, and they said their birthday was. It was Francie's. Thank you. I just, sometimes I know just, there's just, at one point in my life, I knew someone who had a birthday in April from April 1st through April 14th. So I knew some, I mean, even if I didn't necessarily celebrate them with them, I knew someone who had a birthday. Like, a classmate, a sister's classmate, a relative, something like that. Is kind of crazy. I'm just lining up the edge of this with the edge 
we'll do a straight one with this and see what we think. Okay, your daughter laws the 13th, 4th and 6th. The 4th is a good day. That was my that's my sister's. Mine is the 7th. So it's on a Sunday this year. All right, we got to cut these down. And I'm going to save the little bit of extra for like a border because of the texture that's on here. But I'm going to try to keep as much as this as I can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these so you can see it. I'm going to make this a full panel. I don't want to, I don't think I'm going to layer it. I might layer it. I might layer it. Yeah. So this is one of our, your sons is today. There you go. And Heather, your mom's is the sixth. This is one of our um, slimline card bases. They don't come pre pre-scored. I just score them in half, um, but they are three and a half inches. Okay. Lots of Aries. Yes. And Emily's was today. Um, if you didn't see the post over at Brutus Monroe. So we're going to cut this down. I am going to cut it down to three and a quarter. Actually, just a little bigger than three and a quarter. I love this trimmer too, Ellen. It's, it's one of my favorites. Yep, Christopher's is the 13th. So there is just this little bit of extra, and I think I'm just going to save this for a border. There's just enough space here that I think I could stamp a nice big sentiment on there. And then we're going to go over on this side and just trim a hair off. And I think we are going to put this, I am going to put this on, um, I'm going to mat this. But we got to decide which one we're going to use first. This one is a little wet. It is, it is. I think, for you, Penny. I think I knew that. Now, this one, you can see where the edge of the stencil was, I because this one's bigger than that. So I'm going to cut this one down. I think we are going to mat both of these. So I'm going to cut it down exactly where that line is. That piece we're going to throw away. And then this one we're going to cut down to three and a quarter as well. So we can mat it on something. Now, I am kind of rushing this a little bit since we're live, but it is damp, so I'm going to try to be careful because it can tear. And then I think this is a kind of a fun piece. I might save it for right now and see if I can do something with it. Is it your Sally O'Malley's birthday penny? I'm not sure if I know what that means, but I know it's a big one for her. All right, guys, so here's the dilemma we have. We've got this black. And we got the orange. I think I'm kind of leaning this way. I don't know. Which one do you think? This is option A. Okay. And this will be option B. Does anyone have a preference while we are while I dig out some coordinating papers? Okay, I don't, I haven't, Tia, I, growing up, I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of it, so. A, 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 okay. I think we're going to use this for the one. All right, it's A's got it. Sorry, Markel. And then we will do the black for a raven for, I don't know if I have any raven out here. I don't. Do I have a black mat? already cut i do awesome all right so nope it goes this way because this was b so we're gonna swap around this was a right oh that that's not gonna work that one's not a big big enough piece all right we'll cut some raven down so we're gonna do orange here so i need to cut this one down yep okay we're gonna do it this way and this thank you i just was i like to give some options to to the to the audience. I am going to cut this down at um, three and three. Well, what is that? One, two, three eighths. Is that about right? With one. I'm just trying to not make sure I put nothing on that wet. Yeah, that's going to work. So it's just a hair. I just want a little bit of that orange showing. And then we're going to grab some black. Raven ink here. 
We're gonna do the same thing. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. It's it's fun. I, I mean, sometimes I like to kind of not have an idea. I mean, like have a short, somewhat version of an idea, but not a huge plan when I do the lives because I think it's fun to show. Um, you know, when you do videos, you always see the edited version, and you know, a lot of times the 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 bad parts get edited out. We might trim this down just a little bit more. Um, I think we will. Okay. So we've got this. So we got our bases. We're going to trim it down a little bit more. And then we're going to get our sentiments going. I am going to trim off a little bit more of the messier side, I think. Because I want some more of that. We're just going to go down to about three and a fourth. Three and a, qu three and a quarter. And then I'm just going to trim just a little bit off each top and bottom. Just to clean it up. And then we'll eyeball it. How's that look? We're going to trim. I think I'm going to trim that black down on the sides a little bit once we get it down. Nope, we're going to trim off just a little bit more. I don't always measure. Sometimes I like to eyeball it. And then once I get it on, if I don't like it, we will. Yeah, see, I think what we'll do, and then I'll trim that down a little bit. Okay. So that's that one. And let's look at this one. I think we're going to trim just a hair off this one, too. We could have done the blue, but I think the blue is so overpowering since we're going to do the orange, the orange, um, the orange mat to so go with the orange peel. Just a little off the top. And we'll pull extra off the bottom. Now, when you go through this, <laughs> thank you, Melissa. It is overrated. Um, uh, a crafty friend of mine says perfection is for serial killers. She says something in serial killers. I can't remember what my friend Lydia Felder says that, and I think that's kind of fun. So this is kind of our missus. We're gonna start putting this together, then we gotta come up with like a sentiment of some sort. And um, I probably can stamp on this one if I wanted to. But this one with the texture paste isn't going to let me. So we're going to have to stamp and die cut that out quick. So let us get going on this. I'm going to use a little bit of both tape runner and liquid glue. Neighbors are home banging. So my dog thinks there's an intruder. Yeah. I think here's door slam, and sometimes he thinks somebody's here. So my family was visiting in town the last few days, and I got home was it last last night late, and uh, I think I I think I texted and said I was on my way. I can't remember at this point. It was you know it was it was late for me. You know I'm not out usually past nine o'clock ever, and uh, I came in the house. And it was funny. The dog was doing the dead bug. He, if you know what you have a dog, you know what the dead bug is. If you don't know what the dead bug is, let me know and I'll tell you. I mean, I'm sure you can figure out from the description. And I just as I I happened to open the door before he heard me, and uh, I saw him, and he like twisted like a pretzel as he tried to roll off the couch and bark <laughs> and be like, "Oh, oh, oh, you're home." And so he was trying to roll over and stand up. It was pretty funny, actually. I was like, hi, pup. I'm home. So I was out a couple of nights. Staying. I went over to the Airbnb and played some card games and stuff with them. So he hasn't had a lot of mama time. So I know he'll be looking forward to Saturday and spending the day in the craft room with mom after we go for a long, long walk. Oh, your dog joined in the barking. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. I'm gonna stick my Misty on top of it to help it dry. It's not too bad. He is a good boy. He is so protective. He protected me this weekend. I we go through a little kind of woodsy area, sometimes for a walk. And since I knew I was gonna be gone for a little while, my family and I were going to go on a little 
jaunt to another neighboring town, I took him twice on the path that we walked. Um, I haven't done two paths on this on his walk since he hurt his foot. And we were just halfway through our second walk, and it's kind of by a little cricky, it's not, it's part of the Mississippi River, but it's like an offshoot tributary little kind of bend. You know, it's not really a, it's kind of like a crick anyway. And uh, all of a sudden he stopped what he was doing and he started barking. And I looked up and it was from the opposite direction, which is all woods, was a gentleman coming through the woods. And at first I was kind of like, oh, you know, not expecting someone to come from over there because there's no houses. It's like river and woods. And he barked and barked and I, you know, got close and said, oh, you know, he he's not going to bite. He's just, you know, kind of being protective. And the guy stopped. Is an older gentleman. And uh, my, I was like, good job, puppy. He say he protected mom and let somebody knew he was somebody was coming. The cats come flying in when there's a meow. That's kind of funny. Kate, when they hear something like that. My sister, uh, or my nephew, he had a cat. And when they first got him, he was, you know, little, you know, when he was a kitten, he kind of, this is sad to say, but I almost kind of terrorized it. We had to stop after so long because I put a little, like, cat mirror on my phone, and he was going bonkers trying to find it, find where this other cat was. And then I, you know, and I mean, of course, it was kind of funny. And then I realized we were kind of being mean, so we had to kind of stop. <laughs> so when I put my panels down, I like to have them just a little bit bigger because I figure it's always easier to cut off a little and make it match than it is to try to line it up and be off just a hair and it looks off. Does that make sense? And like, and I still like, look, it's still, I don't know what I did, but. So we're going to fix that. I must not have had it in right. All right. There we go. You do the same thing? Yeah. I mean, I always say I can't draw a straight line with ruler. That's better. There we go. And then one little tip I have sometimes is once in a while you get those little corners that don't quite, I kind of just stick my glue under there. I got that from Jennifer McGuire, and I just kind of put a little bit in there. Um, yeah, I try not to focus on it and I just try to go forward and as soon as I'm done, get my pictures taken and get it out of my way so I don't see that because otherwise, then it, yeah, it throws me off a little bit too. Crooked is your trademark, Stephanie. <laughs> well, there, we'll have, that's a trademark. All right, guys, so I think we're going to put this one a little bit lower. I'm not sure where I want to put this one yet. We got to think up some sentiments quick. So this is what we got. They're going to go on a card base like this. There's not going to be any white on the top and the bottom, which is fine. Um, but we got to get those on and then we have to come up with some sentiments. But I think I really wanted to go with the um, sentiments from the Wings of Lace stamp set because they're just, the script font is just beautiful otherwise you know a bold font would really a bold one would really work these are really nice um for here but um i think we're gonna go i'm gonna go with one of these sweet ones and then i think we're gonna use the hello from the sweet wings okay my that's really weird okay there we go okay go right ahead that was weird that my 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 uh keyboard picked up I can't hear you though hold on there you go all right I thought I would just pop in real quick because I just got home and I wanted to see what we're making here I'm so excited that you're making this card because is this did you who originally did the vellum like that was it you or who was it on the team Sarah, I think. Sarah. Sarah, okay. Sarah W., I think, right? Yeah, it's so cool. It's so, so cool. So, um, but, um, so this is the get the gesso. I used the white gesso, Christopher, at the stencil, and then just sprayed it. I think he froze. 
Are we all frozen? Or can you guys? Or just Christopher frozen? Yeah, I think Christopher's frozen. And I don't know if you can hear me, so I'm going to keep going just in case he can. Okay. Um, I got to, my, my thing pops up when I. So what? Are... Okay. Go ahead, Christopher. It's all right. Um, I'll go ahead and say, okay. I'm just going to keep talking and see if he can hear me. Maybe I'm f for him. So I, w I used white gesso, Christopher, with the stencil. Um, on I this think one. I'm back. Uh, there you are. Okay. You're back. Perfect. Okay. I got to put that down so I can see it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I can see you, Penny. <laughs> It was a program, you guys, so I think there you are. When I when I hopped on and I saw Penny, I was I was shocked that she was uh that she had her camera on because she never does. That's <laughs> she <okay>. never does. <laughs> so this is the white gesso. Okay. And then oh, I wow. I sprayed it with a bunch of the chroma mists. Oops. That's okay. amazing. My camera didn't look like it froze. Hold on. What is weird here for me? I don't is it can you guys see it? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, because I said I can't. It's it's all frozen on my side. And um, and then this one is the texture paste from Ranger. Here, I actually let's just turn me off. You don't need to see me right this second. That might help because it's not letting me do three three cameras or something. There. Um. Yeah, it's really weird. Okay. And then we did the vellum on um, with the orange peel and the raven and the raven. So we're just in the raven um, embossing powder. So now I'm just kind of choosing some sentiments. So I think we're going to use the hello on this one and wings of lace. The borders, um, the our sentiments of lace. I it was codenamed Borders for a while, uh, which is like I guess an inside secret at Brutus and Row. Before they get names, they get like these wacky things that just look like them, and then they get official names. But it's okay. They do that is fun to have the wacky names like that Borders, but sent sentiments of lace because they're lacy and sentimenty. Um, I, we're going to attach those with some of our, our dots. And then I grabbed the sending love, I think is what we're going to do. And I'm going to type, we're going to stamp that on some more of the, Ooh, I'm not sure this jack-o'-lantern. This is jack-o'-lantern, right? I didn't, I had it out. Yep. It's jack-o'-lantern. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the only other orange we have is the harvest and it's like a right. much, much, much deeper orange. Okay, I grabbed a bunch to take with me crafting this weekend, and I just grabbed one of each sheet. And so I was like, that matched. And then I didn't craft. So I played card games. So that is kind of the idea between these. I wanted to know what it looked like to spray the chroma mists over both of these. And then this weekend, I'm going to take the do the same technique with the chroma the candy coat pearl for oh, those yeah. of you who are, and do the same thing and that the lace and then just and i did one of the gesso on aqua pigment paper to see if there's a difference because the other two are not your mama's oh yeah there'll definitely be a big difference and i can't wait for you to see yeah and that's what mm -hmm. i thought was would be fun with that part of it it's yeah. just to because i'm going to be honest with everybody these i was terrified of these when i first got them because yeah. i don't like to lose control well those are the new creamier versions so that's it's going to give you a much different finish than the regular ones do so yeah. you can see on your cards how they're very um yeah opaque. we used, yeah, you can see the difference yeah we used all, all, all a bunch of them yeah the gesso though um it's really cool because the gesso didn't didn't um repel it like the candy coat will so it kind of like sucked up the the color which is really really cool yeah and i and i wasn't sure i thought i'm gonna try it and see and then like i said this is that t t i've never used this before yeah. i've had it for about six months mm -hmm. and i thought i opened it for the first time today 
Yeah, I think we sell that. I don't I don't think it's in stock, but I, I'm pretty sure we do sell it. You you do because that's where I got it from. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago. So I I'd always wanted I saw somebody use it once and I thought, oh, I like that. I want to try it because it it's messy and not what I'm I'm not messy necessarily. And I wanted to be able to get out of my comfort zone with it. And we so. are very messy at home office. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we we love uh, messy. And I mean, you should see when we're creating the products. It is a uh, circus, to say the least. Thank you. Linda, I just saw your comment. Thank you for your comment about the cards. It's fun. I guess I think you weren't, I don't know if you were on earlier. I like to just play and um, hope thing comes together on a live because that's how you can see how it works. Oh, it's an SOS status. We do have it in stock. Oh, there you go. Awesome. Okay. This is the orange peel. And that's what was on the vellum. Um, because I thought that would be fun. And I love how the, I was saying how, I like how it looks almost coppery on the vellum. Oh, I love, well, that one is, that, that one does have a shimmer to it, which mm -hmm. I, I think that's the only one out of the new ones that has a little bit of a shimmer to it. I want to add that one and the copper and the gilded all together on something and, you know, like in different sections and oh, yeah. um, see what it looks like together. So I'm gonna quick heat, heat we called it, we called it the, um, we called it orange peel because it is, uh, it still has that shine to it, like an orange peel. So okay. that is, that's, that's why we called it because I, we needed something that was orange, but also had some sort of a shine to it. And an orange peel really was the only thing. Uh, that we could think of. Hello, Rose. It's good to see you too, my friend. Oh, hi, Rose. I Listen, I might once a month join uh, Candy if you guys like this. I mean, if Candy doesn't mind, I, yeah. I think this is fun. No, it's totally fine. I don't, it's totally fine because sometimes I don't, I usually pay attention, but once in a while I'm like, oh, sorry, I missed the, I missed the scent. I missed the, because I use a tablet for mm -hmm. my, because I don't have space for a computer. And it's funny, I'm glad we started using the streaming system because I started using the streaming system because my tablet won't let me see YouTube live, YouTube chat at all. Mm. Um, it's a Kindle and it doesn't yeah. like, it won't let me. So I have to have like usually a phone and then my phone to film. And so I use the tablet sometimes and instead of YouTube pulled up. Yeah, the, right. having an iMac changed my life because it literally takes up zero space. It's just a screen. That's all it is. That's, so that's, and that's what I'm on here. At I, I have the orange one, of course, but that's what I'm on in my office. And it's wonderful because it literally takes up, I mean, zero space on my desk. And this is how big the keyboard is. So it like takes up literally nothing on my desk. That's That would be as I have a bigger space. I don't have a big enough space for that right now in my little craft room. So Sunday. I'm going to use the dots to put the vellum down. The oh, sticky the sticky dots. dots. Yep, the sticky dots. We have a full shipment of those coming in on Friday. Oh, good. They'll probably sell out before I place my order. <laughs> yeah, we, we got four cases of the the clear shattered glass. I can't remember what we named it, but clear shattered glass was like oh. the code name for it. Yeah. Um, that'll be in on Friday too, but I don't. it won't last very long because I'm using it on Thursday. I think I bought like four four of them sometime last year, and I haven't foiled a lot lately. Is it I need called to... magical shattered glass. Yes, is... is that it? Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm gonna use my grid mat. Oh, you guys! I don't know who this is, but I saw this post on Facebook today. Unfortunately, when I don't know the lady, but she had she must have had a fire in her craft room, and she said she could salvage ten percent, but she showed her glass mat. Oh, it yeah, I survived the fire a hundred percent. The yes. only thing that missed was the 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 rubber things fell off. Mm -hmm. She showed it before and it was full of soot and everything, and then she cleaned it. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you that it will survive. Well, it's because of that, it's that tempered glass. Yeah. So if you don't have one, this is a good one to have because of that, for that reason. Yeah. Okay, so we've got that. We've got sending love, and then we got to put this one down here. Do I and know? I have used the sheet. No, foil, okay. the foil doesn't have a shelf life, Melissa. I was going to say, I don't think so, because I've had some since I've met Christopher that I've never used, and it still works. So Yeah, I have some from before I had licensing with them, and it's, I mean, it's, I mean, you, you obviously you want to take care of it, like keep it out of the sun and stuff, because I'm sure it can over time fade, but I don't, I don't think it has a shelf life, no. The first time I foiled was with Gina and Rena, ever. Mm -hmm. 
that was kind of fun. Um, but you know, it was all planned. And then the second time I ever foiled was with you and Sue. Oh yeah. And it did not foil for me. Mm -hmm. And it was something you came over and you're like, here, here's another sheet of foil, foil it a second time. And so my sentiment had two different foils on it. Mm -hmm. Was and that a junkie fest? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't when, know you could foil twice. That was when they first introduced the um, acetate and the, okay. the, clear, the clear toner sheets. And boy, were they tricky because number one, people couldn't figure out which side to use. And then also you, you really can't put it through a laminator by itself because it can curl under. Yep. So we had to teach everybody that you had to use the, uh, a piece of cardstock. And then we taught them, I mean, it was, it was a disaster when they first launched, but now they're, I mean, yes, it's much, much better than it was with the first launch. And that was my goodness. What? 2019. Yep. 2019. 2019. Um, Melissa, are you using what type of lamin? Are you using a laminator? Yeah, we'll, or we'll need to what type of machine it. are you using? Is it just a regular laminator? Because I have had issues foiling sometimes, and I didn't have a laminator. I had a royal. I still have a royal sovereign, but I got it too hot. And I will tell you, if you can or when you can get the fuse, game chainer. I well, I only foil with the fuse in my hot plate. Yeah, now. yeah, we have the. We're hoping that we'll be able to get the fuses back. I'm thinking probably. Uh, probably like mid spring. We do have the intercuts coming back. I know that. Okay, good. I knew um, they were coming back in. But we do not. We we won't have. I think the the fuses for a little while because our we got okay. ours back in. I think we got like I want to say a pallet of them, and they were gone in twenty four hours. So hopefully we'll be able to get um get them back in. But which foil are you using, Melissa? Because if yeah. you're particularly in particular, if you're using the magical um shatter glass there is a side to it so yeah. if your magical shatter glass isn't working what i always say um and of course i don't have any foil in this space yet but what it'll it'll fold so um i don't have a, i don't even have a piece of, oh wait i have a piece of paper so it's so like if it folds downwards like this when you're holding it that means it is that side goes down if you're holding it like this and it folds up that means it is the wrong side. So, oh, there we go. So you can see how that one curls downwards. And obviously that one is a very... You can you see you can it. You definitely but... tell which side is which. But if you hold it like that, see how it tries to curl. If you hold it upside down, it tries to curl in the opposite direction. So that's how you'll know which side is which. Because Magical is a incredible product. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, it hands? does have a right and a wrong side. And that's that's something that you know you want to be. Yeah, mine's be, hidden somewhere. Yeah, I was trying to find mine last night on my live too, and I don't know where it went. I have to. We have to organize our foils. Um, All right, Heather. She was here. I don't know if she still is. <laughs> yeah, she just she just commented. Heather made me buy a lot of a brand new product that we're going to be offering very soon. So if you guys love them, you can thank Heather. If you awesome. uh, no. If you love them, you could thank me. If you hate them, you could blame Heather. <laughs> you showed them to me, but I ordered a lot of it tonight. So I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that everybody loves uh, this new product that we're launching. It's I'll give you a hint. It's something that I use on every single one of my cards. So you'll, you we'll see those probably the first week of April. I'm thinking. Well, I was just saying that's next week already. <laughs> I know. And I said that because I said it's the best month of the year. It's birthday month. I know. It's we have we have two. Wait, how many birthdays do we celebrate, Bruce and Row? Um, well, well in yours, person we have two. Yeah, mine, yours. Yep. Walter, but we'll, we'll celebrate yours via um, via uh, Facetime. I'm sure. But yeah, Daryl's first, and then me. And I'm then, on a Sunday you, this year. And you're, yeah, mine's Saturday this year. It was yeah. supposed to be Friday the 13th, but it was a leap year. Yeah, that's that's why mine's Sunday too. And then Daryl's and then Penny's. Mm -hmm. Oh, gems. That's why I was asking. I was looking at what Melissa said there. We'll just I'm all. I'm going to say no. <laughs> Not gems. All right. I've, this is a sp experiment. This is on the gesso, you guys. I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm heat, heat embossing on it. It should work, but. Oh, you'll be good. <clears throat> just think of gesso as paper. That's what I tell everybody. As soon as gesso dries, it's basically like liquid paper so okay. as soon as it dries you can do anything on top of it that you would do on paper okay 
can you guys see this live? Because I can't. It's not. It's frozen no. for me. Okay, good. Looks well, great. Okay, so then I just folded it under. It's not perfect um, like this, but that's okay because we're just going to tape it down and stick it on our slim line cards. So, and a lot of times, like if I was doing this, you know, not live, I would have cut a bunch of stuff out of the middle of this, like die cuts or something just because, but I wasn't going to do that this time and waste your guys' time watching me die cut. Hey, All you right. just gave me a really good idea. Okay, that's good. There we go. So we've got mm -hmm. one. I know, Heather. I did a lot of late night shopping after Junkie Fest the first few times I watched Christopher, and I was like, I got to stop watching him, or I'm going to spend too much money. <laughs> I was just thinking, what if there was an A2 size die that was sized perfectly to cut out the portion of the paper that you're not going to use, but it had a whole bunch of useful dies on the plate. That sounds fabulous. I mean, or just generic dies, like uh, maybe like a flower or a heart. That's what I mean. Or... Like, what if it had like like banners or tags or, mm -hmm. you know, just a, just a whole bunch of things that you would use often that would, you know, you would normally be wasting that centerpiece. Hmm. Because... That has me thinking now. Because I, I cut them out all the time, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's a circle or Penny mm -hmm. is, okay, at the 12th. Okay, I was going to say hers is the day before, mm -hmm. Christopher's, I thought. All right, I'm going to put this on like that. Oh, and then where did my sentiment go? Um, it's here somewhere. I I hope you know. Know. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll may have to put that on. Oh, it went in. Did it go in the garbage? No. It's on a piece of yellow paper. Did if you were a sentiment, where did you go? Where would you go? My with? my garbage bin at Brutus and Row. If something falls in that in my studio, I'm never retrieving it. It is a giant <laughs> orange garbage can. I that just dumped mine falls, before. I'll never ever find it. All right, I'm gonna put this one I think down below so that they're oh, kind of a little bit the same. Yep, I found it there. And now I'm gonna use both liquid. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have a left-handed card. That's okay. Good, good thing I noticed before I put the sentiment on. Or just put it, make make it um so it's it's top folding. No, I already put it on the card base. Is what I meant. So it's going to be. Oh, but if left. you turn it to the side, you can just do it top folding, and then but put the your it over there. I don't know. Butterflies. Oh well, yeah, the butterflies. I guess are. Yeah. I didn't know. I forgot about the butterflies. Yeah, that's okay. No big deal. I wasn't paying attention. It'll just be for my sister. She's a lefty. There you go. All right, we're going to put that down here instead, and we're just going to put that on. And then I think, I, oh, I was going to, I do want to put some liquid glue on the, oh, that stuck pretty good, actually. Usually I use both when I have texture. Title dies, yes. Well, so that the face tape is a whole different type of sticky. Yeah. So it's we've got those, and I think we need some gems. Because that ATG tape wasn't made for us, just like no. everything else. We stole it. Um, that ATG tape was made for the, the packaging industry. I mean, that's what they use to close boxes. Like, you know, that real sticky tape when you're ripping a box open, that's what yeah. ATG is. And I don't know, my friend buys it by the case, so I, I'm pretty sure I know where she gets it from, but I have no idea. So I just buy it from her. Yes, but Melissa, but the idea that I have, and I, I don't want to interrupt Candy anymore. No, go ahead. You, you all know I can talk. Um, the idea that I have, and I probably shouldn't say this because what was that guy's name from Willy Wonka that stole the ideas? Oh, um, Slugsworth. Slugworth. Yeah, I don't know if Slugsworth is here. So um, you never know whether there's a spy. But the idea would be that there would be, and I'm just going to draw it really quickly. So it would be a, uh, a center piece that looks like this. So this these would not be die cuts, okay? So these would just be, let's say they're just like, let's let's consider them as just little, little, uh, I don't know, let's say they're little hoagies that are cut out of there. And then inside of the hoagies, there would be things like stars or hearts or um, sentiment. And then what you do is you take whatever hoagie you want and then you put it in your die. And then you can choose what gets cut out of the centerpiece. So mm -hmm. instead of you, you know, and instead of this all being one thing and you're like, oh, well, I don't really need hearts right now, or oh, I don't really need stars right now. You could instead take your hoagie pieces, pop them inside of here, 
And then you can cut out whatever you want from that centerpiece and then you're not wasting it, but it's also going to cut out the square as well. So then you can do it again. So then you yeah. can use that piece again. And as long as it's matted to not be where the hoagie pieces are, yeah. I think it's, I don't know. Yeah. This might be, I do this all the time. Yeah. That's so to basically be like that, but just a whole bunch of little, yeah. And you'll be able to choose, and and a hoagie is a is is a is a general term. They'll probably be square. They'll probably be rectangles. But it'll give you the ability to cut out little pieces from, and we'll have like a heart, and we'll have like a basic shape set. We'll have basic sentiment set. We'll have a I don't know. The sky's the limit, really. I think it'll be really cool. Yeah, that's that's, that's and that all came from you saying you were going to cut out the center of your <laughs> and, that I'm, and that I'm sitting here. That's why I was looking down because I'm like sketching and drawing and I'm like, okay, what can we do? Yeah. All right, so Francie's not here, but this is for her. We got to get out the st the the stent the pen that will poke you in the eye. Oh, the pokey tool. Uh, well, this one for some reason always looks like it's 3D and poking you. Oh yeah, it's. I it's this is for diamond dots. Where'd you get that one from? That's really cool. A friend of mine bought it off of Instagram. She said it's a lady who uses it. I can find out who it's wax in it. You can, because I know you do diamond dots. You can uh, sharpen it. Yeah. And I um, didn't do diamond dots until people started buying me diamond dots. And now I can't stop doing diamond dots. <laughs> my niece was here and she just did a narwhal one that was really, really cool. And I said, what are you going to do with the rest of your diamond dots? And she's like, well, I don't know yet. They're all in one bag. And I'm like, well... When your mom gets tired of picking them up, send them to me because that is what we're going to use on this other card. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, actually, I mean, Taylor sells them, doesn't she? Well, she calls them something different, but I mean, they're that's what I, they are. There. They might be, but I have a friend. I was at actually Stamp Joy, or at, at, at Stamp Joy and mm -hmm. my friend Tara brought them all and said, take as many as you want. They're all extras. So another friend and I grabbed a bunch and I've been using them. I like them for the center of flowers in particular. Well, what I would probably do, not afraid of color, I would probably do one that does a um, like embosses like a sequin so you would be able to like on your um on like your pretty like foil card stock it would not only cut out the circle but it would also emboss on it what a sequin would look like so then you could kind of make your own sequins but the cool thing is you don't have to you, you wouldn't have to use the system together you could use your yeah. inner pieces completely separately if you want yeah I think we may, listen, look for it in May. I can't do it for April because uh, manufacturing takes a long time for, <laughs> no, we'll do, maybe we'll do one with a middle hole and one without a middle hole. Well, there's always a way to add on to things sometimes too. Yeah. Well, the great thing about this is once we have the base, yes, we could every single month and then maybe it becomes a subscription that you get the new inner pieces mm -hmm. every month. Because I have, I'm excited for the next month's, I'm not saying what it is, but the die of the month and just. Oh, it's a good one. I know. Really and using it with anything in my stash and possible options to add on, paste maybe down the line if you do that. So yeah. the I just realized that these are perfect for this. The diamond dots are perfect, but I'm not going to pull them out right now, but I'm going to put little gems in the middle of these. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I don't know. I'm not going to pull them out because we're already running over a little bit. That's my not, fault. No, that's okay. Not that anyone cares, but I mean, so I added just a few little dots. Oh, and I'm throwing them all over the floor that when I spilled them. <laughs> yeah, T. Yes, he likes to yeah tease us a lot. Well, so it just, I mean, it just it just happened. Well, the I could you all can know it's a it's. I think I told them already. It's a snow globe next month. So oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't going to say that. You don't really know what's in the snow globe yet, but no. I can tell you that it's very, it's probably the most versatile mm -hmm. um, one that we've done in a very long time. I'm really excited for it. Hello, my Go beautiful on. Robin from Stampin' Bug. When are you coming to see me? I All right. You. You're okay with going over, Sarah. So where we go? We've got two of them. This one's the gesso card with the chroma mists. It looks like amazing. I said. Just sprayed them. And then this one is the texture paste from Ranger, the opaque crackle with chroma mists, different colors. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see the difference. I love that stamp so much. Stephanie, I am. Tr I try to go live every Wednesday. I usually am. I think I've only missed one or two Wednesdays because I've been mm -hmm. sick, mm -hmm. but like really sick, but <laughs> I can't talk sick. But yes, I usually am live every Wednesday. So 
Um, I that think was actually the last stamp that was designed for that release, too. Was this one? Mm -hmm. Well, it's one of my favorites. I was excited to get it. so Because I was in full butterfly else. mode when I was designing the other stuff. And I was like, I feel like we need a border. And I don't know what made me think of it, because we used to have those border dies, which are coming back for the 10-year 10, 10 anniversary. Um, we used to have those border dies that were just absolutely beautiful, but they were really big. So I think we're going to scale them down for the um, for the, the oh. 10th anniversary. Although we might not because people love to like to use them for scrapbooking. So um, That's the, I, I looked at those dies when I was figuring out stuff for the, because we're bringing back a hundred products for the 10 year anniversary Whoa. on hired stuff. So when I was looking at that, I was like, hmm, what if that was a stamp instead? And then of course, a week before release, I was like, but what if we had a stencil too? So Daryl wanted to kill me because I, and then of course that's the, that stencil and the butterfly um, builder stencil is probably the most popular stencils that we've ever released in the history of Brutus and Rose. So I haven't Daryl used the butterfly it. builder yet. That's my goal for this weekend. Hmm. So I, cause I haven't had a chance to yet. So that's, I'm excited for that one this weekend. Oh yes, you can stamp it. It's it's a repeating pattern, Sarah. That is correct. You can just yes. keep stamping it. Because mm -hmm. I did that with one of my card. I did that with this card. I know. Can you believe we'll be ten years old in in December? I can't. I mean, I can because I it feels like it's been about fifty. <laughs> I did that with this card. Oh, I love that. You know, and then I just and it's lined up right here. Wait a second. How did you do that in the center? Oh, that's one of our stickers. Oh yeah, this is one of the. Oh wow! Stickers. Isn't it ridiculous when I get excited about our own product? <laughs> like, <laughs> where the heck did you get that butterfly? It looks amazing. Wow, you'll all be excited in April. We have four new foilable stickers coming out. That's awesome. I need dies to cover cardstock that meet in the middle of a card front. Does that make sense? I need dies to cover cardstock that meet in the middle on a card front. I feel like this is a math equation. Hold on. I know. Nice to cover cardstock that meet in the middle. Oh, so you need like, so like if, are you saying if you do two different colors or if you have like scraps? That would yeah. probably be a good thing for our, I don't know if we still have bodacious borders or not, but that would be a good one for that. Mm -hmm. That was from CYOE last year. Yeah, mine's on the other side of the room. I think oh, to cover sure. the cut line. Yeah, bodacious borders would probably be your best bet because bodacious borders not only has really, really cool like border, but they the you can add stuff to the inner pieces of them. And I don't know if they're still in stock. So that might be I, I might be a horrible suggestion, but those would work perfectly for that. Period. Oh, that is one of my favorite die sets ever. And and I've just like I have the star one and the I have two of them cut out. I haven't used them yet, but I'm ready to go. Here's the that would be and I love the paper on that one. Oh, oh. I hope it's still in stock. If not, we're in trouble. Because I'm so, suggesting things that don't. There exist. you go, Terry. And for like this one, you can keep the stars. This one, you can keep the circles, the clouds from this one. It's out of stock, but you can get notified. Okay. So I don't have them all cut out yet, but those those are the ones I have cut out. I should probably. That will be those. on the reorder list. Although, what was the other one with the flowers? That would be a good one too. Flowers. Mm. Remember, it was a, a die of the month. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, stay rooted. That's it. That would be a good one, too. Um, hold on. That's in my other folder. <laughs> I've got them in two different sections. And that one is in stock. Okay. I have that one here, too. I just have to figure out where it is. Oh, there's a lot of really, really great projects. Here. Here. Stay rooted is this one. That would be a good one, too. Yep. And it's, um, I'll open it up so you can see it. So, it's, so like here's one of the flowers that's done. I haven't used it yet. So it would fit and cover up a line. Yep. Stay Rooted is not sold out, but um, Bodacious Borders is. Okay. All right. I got to put those away. Those have stuff that's not available yet. So I don't want to, or not available anymore. I want people to see that. <laughs> Hmm. So, all right, you guys. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining me, Christopher. Um, My pleasure. I will see you guys next week. And um, 
Not sure what we're going to play with yet. Depends on what, if anything comes early enough or otherwise we'll play with this again or something new, something else. Oh, you should have the, you should have the stuff, I think, by then. It just depends because there's no mail Monday. So, you know, if things are dumb. Yeah, because everything, everything is in now. So the only thing we, there was a delay on the dies. So yeah. we should be, um, we should be at least able to send you something. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, It'll be fine. We I got lots of stuff to use yet. You guys, you're welcome. Thank you. Kelly, about notifications. You have yet to be able to find a way to get a notification. Am I missing it? Um, about so restocks? If, if, so you're on YouTube, it looks like. So if you're on YouTube, you just have to make sure that you click on the bell and you have to make sure that it's all notifications. Because what YouTube likes to do is YouTube likes to only give you like what they think the notification is you want to see, which is never the correct notifications. So you have to make sure that you click on all notifications. Mm -hmm. That's the only way um, to make sure that you are going to um, be able to see uh, everything. Is it Kelly, is that what you were asking about? Or were you talking about notifications for project products? Oh, I might've gone on a full tangent that wasn't. No, I don't know which one she was asking about. Um, I was going to. Yeah, here, I'll show, I can share my screen and show. Okay, good, because I can't pull, I was trying to pull it up on my old phone and it's not cooperating. Yeah, let me, Um. so let me go to, let's see, is this going to Bodacious show? Borders. Yeah. Yep. Can you see my screen? Nope, probably not. There we go. So if you're on, if you're, so if I, if I look up Bodacious Borders and it's out of stock, the um it's going to pop up right here so for some reason this isn't showing the correct thing but you would just put in your email and then hit this button and then it's going to uh it's going to send it over for some reason i do see now what you're what you're saying it should pop up here and tell you that it is sending it over to you uh, i'm gonna have to look into that and see why it's not showing that info and if you are, have already signed up for it and you do it again, it will tell you that you've already signed up for notification on that. So, because mm -hmm. I've done that. So, like, did I sign up for that? It's so. really, really easy to do on the app, too. Okay. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, thank you very much for joining me. And I will see what we play with next week. Good night, friends. And I think Friday, no, Saturday, I will have the first post up that has. Christopher's brutified card with my brutified card. And then next week I'll have all the rest of them up. So, Perfect. so on the blog. So, all right. Have a good night, everybody.